They don't fly. That's what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> I know. I know. I, 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 haven't, I haven't read this book, uh, and, I, and I'm going to talk to the author, and I haven't read the book, and usually I try and read the book, but I haven't read this book, and you know why? I'm too scared. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was co-written by... Uh, co-written? Co-written. <laughs> co-written. Co-written. Written by Chuck Hogan and uh, Guillermo del Toro, and Guillermo uh, is uh, you know he's, he does scary things. <laughs> it's, it's called The Strain. This it's, it's in stores, you know, bookstores where you can buy coffee. <laughs> what was that? I came for a book. Oh, have a latte. How about you kiss my ass? <laughs> anyway, sorry, don't don't clap that. We'll have to beep it. Um, Anyway, this is in stores on June the 2nd, uh, and I might work up the courage to read it. Please welcome Guillermo del Toro, everybody. Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo! Welcome to the show, Guillermo. Thank welcome. You, I, um, I, I haven't read the book yet because I'm a bit scared. I'm scared of that cop. Oh, really? Come on, that cop. Because you did the Hellboy movies. This would be great in the Hellboy movies. I think it's a, the largest prop I, I've ever seen. Yeah, well, I, some, some of us are insecure, Guillermo. Right? <laughs> a larger snake always works. A larger them. snake always works. Don't they teach you that in uh, film school? No, they didn't. Well, it's time somebody taught you. Aren't you doing the Hobbit movie? Yeah, yeah. Put a big, yeah. giant small, uh, uh, snake in that. Yeah, well, a, a worm, yeah. Yeah, a big, giant, giant dragon. Worm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the smog. You could put smog. Yeah. Could, this could be smog. That, that, look. Oh, you know, look out, Bilbo Baggins. There I go. Yeah. You know, may I borrow it no, for no, a, three years? No, no, no. <laughs> anyway, tell me about the book. What happens in the book? Well, it's, you know, it's, uh, I grew up uh, with scary vampire stories. Yeah. And uh, it, it, there is another branch of vampire stories that is romantic and romantic. The Twilight vampire? Yeah, all that? The, or the Unrise vampires and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I really, being a sick, sick fat uh, human being, yeah. I really wanted to go back to the idea of a, an undead creature that... Uh, thought bad vampires. Bad vampires. Welcome to this show, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> I'm tired of it too. I'm tired of it. I, I don't want it anymore. They... We are outraged. Yes! <laughs> vampires are meant to be frightening, not some actor douchebag with big hair. <laughs> oh! Don't worry, I only care about you and I'm a vegetarian. That's not a vampire! That's not a vampire, is it? That's, that's not a vampire. That, that, my friend, is a Jonas brother. That's not a vampire. <laughs> Anyway, that, so there's real proper grown-up vampires in this? Indeed they are. And, oh. and uh, partially was to reinvent uh, the biology of the vampires, right. the anatomy and so forth. We answer an age-old question, which is what happens to vampires' genitals? Oh, really? <laughs> what page is that on? Page. <laughs> we, really? I, I'm going to read that. I'm excited now. I'm like, all right, really? let's get to the vampires' pee-pee. Come uh, on. <laughs> There is a, a long section about the vampires. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really terrific. Are you now? You you you're, uh, famously do some very very weird uh, things. I'm, this book sounds weird. Uh, you've made some very uh, forgive me odd and frightening films. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, are you an odd and frightening? You seem quite a cheerful man to me. Well, you know they haven't excavated under the cellar in my house, but all right. <laughs> I'm still a free man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Should they, Guillermo? No. Should they? Because a lot of cops watch this show to get ideas. Oh, they're really. like, oh, yeah. I'm in trouble. No, I... Mary Louise Parker, now me, is like a completely... I know, it's like pot night, yeah. <laughs> I know everyone's all like, thank you, Scottish coded guy. Pot, pot luck show. Yeah, the pot luck show. Hey, um, so... 
Who uh, who writes the vampire stories that you like then? Who uh, do you like the the Bram Stoker's Dracula? Do you I, like that I, one? I adore. I mean, that's a, that's a great uh, one of the sort of flashpoints of vampire literature. But yeah. I also love uh, Richard Madison, Stephen King. I love uh, short stories that date even before Dracula. Yeah. And I, I read the, mostly as a kid, curiously enough, I don't know how or why, but I gravitated a lot towards vampire fact, like lore, ancient lore, books written in the 18th century, 19th century. Really? About vampire fact. Yeah. Where, where, where did you find these books? Where did you grow up? I was a strange fan. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid. You know, we traveled a lot uh, uh, between the States and Mexico, and I always had the uh, nose and eye infections uh, going through bookstores, used oh, bookstores really? in America. And I found uh, really beautiful stuff. I, I Finally, I managed to buy the original manuscript, the original printing of one of those books from 1741. Wow. A treatise on vampires that I read, reproduced in another volume as a kid. Have you ever gone uh, over to uh, Transylvania or uh, these, uh, you know, the vampire, you know, <laughs> hangouts? I was. I was in Romania. I was scouting for a movie. I was uh -huh. scouting for At the Mountains of Madness, the H.P. Lovecraft uh, novel. I love H.P. Lovecraft. Love Do you like H.P. Lovecraft? <laughs> Holy macaroni, everybody! The wow. fat man is a geek! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise! Best issue ever. Wow, that, <laughs> that's... H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, if you don't know, and let's be honest, you don't. Uh, <laughs> he, he was a right... When was he born, H.P. Lovecraft? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Well, he was Providence, a, Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, 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 and he was about 46 when he died, 47, 48, yeah, something like that. Yeah, he was very young, and, and he, he, he was a very strange, thin man. Yeah, big, tall, thin man that wore boots and wrote very frightening he, stories. He was dressed uh, as a girl for most of his childhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was not exactly... He would have needed that snake to... He would have loved a snake, H.P. Lovecraft. To, yeah. to feel secure. Yeah, no... It, but he, he wrote about big tentacles. Yeah, he did, actually. <laughs> Do you think there was no sexual issues there with I am absolutely Lovecraft? sure there yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> he wrote that. That was Providence, it? Rhode Island. Yeah. Tentacles. Come on. <laughs> I have no idea what you mean, Guillermo. Uh, what is about, there a latte in there? No, is that, no, no, no. It's uh, that's just it's water. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes it spits. <laughs> No, I, uh, I, I, H.P. Lovecraft wrote uh, The Thing at the Top of the Stairs. Remember that? Yeah, that's a good short story, isn't it? It's about a thing at the top of the stairs. <laughs> and the, three, the things at the threshold and oh, so forth. Oh, yeah. It was, I used to like reading H.P. Lovecraft. He was a great American writer, but the thing is, if I would read it at night, it gave me horrible nightmares. Yes. I mean, really horrible nightmares. That's what I love about... Uh, I really love uh, the short stories and the novels that actually kept me awake as a kid. Right. And that really... I, some of them I used to read in my room and I would have to yell for my father to come back and turn on the lights. Wow. And they, they were really scary. And I wanted to go back to that type of uh, scary book in this. Yeah, no, it's... it's uh, I, I'm looking forward to this. I'm very excited about the scariness and the vampire's genitals. The very lovely Guillermo del Toro, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I know what you're thinking. Craig, what's that strange-looking computer you're holding? I'll tell you what it is. It's a book. It, it's, uh, it's back in the day. People used to read these. And, uh, and my next guest wrote it. Uh, and uh, he's the, a writer and director. And this new book's called The Fall. It's book two of the strain... Stri t strain... Tri it's the... Well, he'll tell you about it, but... Suffice to say, the book is called The Fall, and it's in stores now, and uh, here's what the Star Tribune in Minneapolis, the best paper in America, says about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't be so smug, you L.A. bastard. <laughs> the Star Tribune in Minneapolis says, riveting from the start. Scenes are so vividly drawn that you could almost smell the mouldering soil that clings to the undead, feel their unnatural heat. <laughs> Please welcome the wonderful Guillermo del Toro, everybody. Hey, Guillermo! How are 
my friend. Excellent. It's good to see you. And uh, congratulations. Now, what I was trying to say is this is the second in a trilogy. That's of correct. The Strain trilogy, which is, is about vampires. It is. But not sexy, twinky vampires that go, oh, my feelings. <laughs> you know, uh, no, no, no. No, no. These Angry, are... bitey vampires. Scary. Yeah. All right, what happens in this one then? Vampires take over the world? Uh, much? Uh, they pretty much, the, the ending of the book is not called the fall for anything, you know? All right, it happens towards the end of the year? Uh, yeah. <laughs> not there yet, it's yeah. right around Christmas. Now, you, you wrote this book with Chuck Hogan, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, do you guys sit to dress up as vampires and get in a room together <laughs> and kind of act it out together? No, no, we, we started writing on the first book. We get together for what is called a four-day breakfast, which is... <laughs> Four day right, breakfast. Right up my alley. Ah, uh, yes. And, and, uh, and <laughs> rather up mine as well. <laughs> Can I join in in the next book? It is. Right. It's like Hobbit's time too, you know? And then uh, Chug and I essentially discuss the whole structure. Mm -hmm. And then each of us starts writing a chapter separately. I call dibs on this, he called dibs on that. And we then switch chapters like two months, three months later. And you re rewrite each other's work? That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. And is Chuck uh, into all sorts of weird and creepy, scary stuff? No, like no, you? no. He, uh, you know, yeah, he, he comes with some strange stuff, but he is mostly uh, known as a crime novelist. He wrote uh, the novel that uh, was based at the town, Ben Affleck's movie, yeah, The yeah, Town. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wrote the novel it's uh, based oh, on. Oh, yeah. good for him. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a very strange man. Yeah. No, he is. But look, there's, a, there's your pictures on the back. Yeah. No, like that. Isn't that lovely? Look, you're thinking, yeah. and he's going, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. trying to hide my second chin. No, you don't have a second chin. You I got have, your beard there. No, there's a second one there. No, come on. And a third one down the collar. Well, you know what, you know what the problem That's That's the four day breakfast <laughs> that'll do that. To you. That's a secret, eh? Yeah, no, it's, no so you're, you're going to write one more of these then, I guess, yeah. to make the trilogy three? That's <laughs> traditional. <laughs> They said that, that that's the way it was. Yeah, no, now tell me about what's going on with The Hobbit. I think you're, you're going to direct The Hobbit, you're not directing The no, Hobbit? No, no, I, I left uh, the project about six months ago. Oh, okay. And, uh, and left New Zealand, and I'm back in, in Los Angeles preparing At the Mountains of Madness, produced by Jim Cameron. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, is that uh, he... H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft. Still yeah, yeah, you still get, you were going to get me an H.P. Lovecraft. I know, but right? I don't, I, look, this is too big. Yeah, let me see, all right. Man, you got really big sausage <laughs> fingers. It's, it's a four-day breakfast. <laughs> I mean, man, no, but that's, I mean, I've got pretty big hands, because, you know, but I, uh, but like, that's, that's big. Look, it makes my hand look like a puny claw. That's great. I love this, though. I enjoy the work of H.P. Lovecraft. Very frightening. And so you're making a movie of... Uh, yeah, we're making it as, a, as, a, as something that hasn't been seen in, in a while. is huge budget, big tentpole horror. Right. R-rated, and uh, and uh, it's truly we're creating creatures and monsters unlike anything you've ever seen, and uh, we were we've been designing them for several weeks, and about two weeks ago we got we were visited by uh, Dennis Muren from ILM, and I was very happy showing him the creatures, and he turned around and he said, "Do you realize nobody has ever seen monsters like this ever?" That's for my guy, Industrial Light and Magic. Yeah, That's yeah. a big compliment for yeah. a fat geek that was like a. No, metal I see no. Why do you do this? You're so hard on yourself. You do the wonderful movies. You win the Oscars. You do the books about proper vampires, and then you and then you start giving yourself a hard time. Is that why? Is that why? Is that? Will the monsters make it better, Guillermo? <laughs> <laughs> Don't give yourself a hard time. You do wonderful work. I am uh, Brad Pitt's stunt double. Yeah, there you are. There you are. That's a little more like it. Do you, uh, do you ever get scared when you're uh, writing, rather writing a, a scary scene or writing or directing a scary scene where you actually go, you know what, I'm kind of pooping my pants a bit here. <laughs> actually, actually, yes. Good. Well, not, not often, but uh, the other day I was, I wake up two hours before the rest of the family right. to, to write. I have two hours of peace. I have writing desks here and there and library. I write in a sofa. You write <laughs> in the a, sofa? I write in the sofa. And, and I'm writing and I hear a noise and then another noise and, a, and it was my fat, giant fat cat. Oh. But by the time I, I realized it was just a cat, I was already pooping. The, the you <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, uh, he's available for your monster film, by the way. 
I think he was my producer at one point. Yeah. No, he's uh, he's uh, yeah. No, forget him. Anyway, uh, sounds like George Takei. For legal reasons, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I uh, no, you have a giant fat cat. I, I do. It's Does a, the cat come on the four-day breakfast? Is that what no, happens? No, no, it's, it's a cat that is so useless that we thought it was blind. So we, we, we took the cat, it's, it's like... Whoa, 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 man! <laughs> First of all, uh, CBS does not uh, think that cats are useless yeah. uh, or, that, or that blindness in any way constitutes... No, no, no. no it's a, come back. I gotta come back here tomorrow, you don't. <laughs> all right, anyway, carry on. CBS cares. This uh, cat, is a, the cat essentially doesn't move until I'm writing a horror scene. Really? Uh, and it just stays there. We took it to the doctor and, and uh, we got the diagnosis. It's not blind, it's just a lazy cat. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't like to do much. That's a medical condition, then? It, laziness? You know, it's like, uh, like uh, I, I'm going for, I, I hope they uh, have the same diagnosis. Yeah, uh, but, you're, but you're not a lazy man at all. You work all the time. You get I, up two I hours ahead of your four-day breakfast do, I meetings. Do. I mean, that's it. <laughs> I do. I am very active. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm almost blind. I'm fat, too. <laughs> I mean, look at this. CBS in no way endorses the views of Guillermo del Toro or uh, associated companies and uh, 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 catch the ghost whisperer of this fall. <laughs> oh, the ghost whisperer is cancelled. That was a great show, though. Sad about that. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. What about doing some TV? What about a scary TV show? That'd be cool. Well, in, I'm, I'm talking, uh, you know, we, we have a project that hopefully will be announced soon that uh, I'm co-writing with uh, a very good writer, David Icke, who uh, was one of the creators of Galactica, Battlestar Galactica. David Icke? David Icke, yeah. Is he a British guy? Oh, no. No, uh, yeah, oh, sorry. No. Uh. How can we? Yeah, no. No, but, um, you know, it, it will be announced soon. I'm not sure if it's going to get pick it up or not, but we're trying. Yeah, well, uh, if you ever need a skeleton, uh, come back and see us, or, or if you just, or oh, oh, this, oh yeah, no, this you can't have, man. This is, uh, it's been there forever. Yeah, this is very special. And see how the tooth is missing one of yeah, the Yeah, what happened there? I can't tell you. No? Well, I would tell you, but it would scare you. <laughs> I don't, I don't actually know what happened. I think it's actually just bad diet. Oh, really? Yeah. Just lost its tooth. But, uh. So one should never diet. I there you so are. Not. You should not die it Never. because your teeth will fall out. Think... <laughs> CBS Kills. Get out with Dr. Toro, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back. My next guest is a terrifically talented genius, some would say. I'd be one of them. A writer, director, producer. He's his new film, Mama which is in theaters this Friday. Take a look at this, if you dare. I'd have been, okay, nothing, I'm, I'm out of here, you kids. You kids, sleep tight. Guillermo del Toro, everybody, Guillermo del Toro. Wow. My dear boy. How are you, my friend? I'm all right. I'm all right. How are you doing? Very good. Very yeah, happy. you're doing. The, the new film looks very frightening indeed. It is. It's actually very scary, but it's also very beautiful. <laughs> it does? Yeah, well, of course. Yeah, but it's like, it's Mama, right? Yeah. Is it like, so she goes into the closet and it's Mama Mia and there's the cast of... <laughs> Everybody, a bunch of uh, Hollywood actors are all come out singing and, uh, ABBA songs. Yes, indeed. That sounds pretty I can terrifying, yeah. Guillermo. <laughs> I would actually quite like to see your take on Mamma Mia. I think it could be I, different. I, I, yes. It would start with a huge explosion with the entire cast dying. Ah. <laughs> he looks forward to your letters. <laughs> The views expressed by Guillermo are not mine in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, it was not. So, uh, this was originally a, a short film, though. Yes. Wasn't it? You saw the film? It was. Yeah, I saw. I see a lot of short films uh, during the year that people give me in uh, conventions or in appearances, whatever. And I, I watch them or they send them to, to my internet address, 
And I watch them, I write, not everyone, it's hundreds of shorts, but a lot of people I write back, I say, keep going, it's good. Uh, but then, now and then I find one that is incredible. Yeah. And I go and uh, produce for first time directors quite often. So you produced this one? Then? Yes. Right, right, right. Who's the director? Andy Muschietti. Right. Is and he I, sent you his shorts, yeah. and then you let him uh, direct them. <laughs> you send me your shorts, we wash them, press them, send yeah, them yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then talk now about what's, what's the story of the movie then? The, the kids are, uh, there's something scary in the closet? Yeah, the, ki the kids are, are abandoned in, in, the, in the woods by uh, their father. Mm. And uh, it's half fairy tale, half, half horror film. And uh, they survive five years in the wilderness and nobody knows exactly how and uh, the thing that kept them alive uh, is a ghost oh. the, he, he, he looked after them it's the presence of a dead mother and then they come back to civilization and she comes with them I'm, so, I'm kind of freaked out already <laughs> <laughs> do you do you believe in ghosts yeah oh you do I actually do because I, I've had two experiences and uh, they were I never saw a ghost, but I heard a ghost. One was when I was a kid in my uh, uncle's room. He had passed away. I heard him breathing, and I uh, recognized his voice. It went on for about 10 minutes. Second time it happened when I was scouting locations for The Hobbit. In the, in the um, what, what are we talking about? I don't know what we're talking about. Well, I, I always keep a little... Uh, in my notebook, I keep the addresses of all the haunted hotels in the world right. in case I go there. Like, I, I've stayed in Atlanta. I, I got a great one for you. Really? Yeah, 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 really? yeah, yeah. It's in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh -huh. I stayed in it. I was freaked out when I was in it. What was the name of that hotel? Do you remember I talked about, I think it was called the Duke Hotel or something in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh -huh. you, you, I tell you, you stay there, you grind it. Your pants. I, I, You'll I, be sending your shorts to someone else to get them. I, I think I just did. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's very, very frightening. I don't, I don't know what it was. It was just a very a malevolent, terrifying presence. I left at 5 a.m. Was there shampoo in the room? There was shampoo in the room. I have to be fair. Yeah, there was free shampoo. Why shampoo? What's it? No, there was free shampoo and the towel, all the towels you could take. But that's not. I can't take the. Uh, Did you see something? No, I didn't see something, but I kept thinking that it was about to happen. Yeah. Like, I, I was about to see something. So I just left in case I did. <laughs> I'll it go was there. Preemptive strike against the paranormal. I'll give you my report. Yeah, you, you should go see it. You should but, make a movie about but it. But in the New Zealand one, I asked for the. I knew there was a haunted room and it was off season. They opened the, the hotel. It was like a hundred something rooms and they opened it just for us. We were eight people in the scouting and I asked for the haunted room. I got to the haunted room. I'm watching The Wire. That's computer. a great show. The Wire it's, is a it, great show. It was a great show. I was not thinking about ghosts. I said, hey, nothing's happening. And uh, really deep into the night, as the stringer bell was going to get off. I just spoiled the, the entire show. Uh, a lot of people have already <laughs> seen the, that, uh, the first, Hopefully. second season of The Wire. So Hopefully we're all right. So. Yeah. But uh, I started hearing these horrible woman screams. And there was nobody else but the eight of us in the hotel, and I had warned them not to screw around with, with me because I would fire all of them. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I tracked it and I found it. It was coming from a small window that went into a chute into the cellar. And then I watched the wire with a little more volume, and about 20 minutes later I started hearing a man sobbing and, and screaming in pain. Was that you? No. All right. <laughs> It was. I shouldn't have eaten the hotcakes, but <laughs> no, it was. It was. It was really, really spooky. Did they to say have watched the whole wire? Yeah. The, the, the whole. Did season. they have shampoo? They did. <laughs> Maybe there's a connection between shampoo and the paranormal. That's it. They're coming back from the grave to wash their hair. <laughs> now we know. Yeah, might be it. Why not? Now we know. When are you, are you going to make another Hellboy? Can we have another Hellboy? I, I don't know. We're trying. We're trying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd like another Hellboy. I love the Hellboy. We're, we're uh, right now, the, the, we, uh, Ron Perlman is in the last movie I did, which comes out in July 13, 2013, this year, uh, Pacific Rim. Right. Which is a gigantic movie about uh, massive robots, 250 feet tall. I love it already. Battling 250 feet tall monsters. This, this, is, this is great. <laughs> this is exactly the kind of thing I like. Massive robots fighting giant monsters. Exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. With Ron Perlman. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> with Ron Perlman in it. Ron but Perlman. he's not Hellboy, he's, he's Ron. No, he's just Ron. But right, he's right. very 
close to, <laughs> to Hellboy anyway. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. That sounds great. Pacific Rim? Yeah. So what happens in the Pacific then? Oh, indeed. Right. We, we have uh, huge battles. Uh, it's a um, legendary Warner Brothers production. It's the biggest movie I've ever made. And uh, we basically destroy about three cities in the movie. <laughs> Completely total them. Really? Yeah. It's awesome that you're doing this important. <laughs> no, I like the big, scary movie. And the cast of Mamma Mia is in it. Yeah. <laughs> who is in it? Who, who, who is in the movie? It's um, Stringer Bell. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, Idris Elba. Yeah, Idris Elba. Yeah, He's Idris a fantastic Elba. actor. Fantastic isn't actor. Uh, Charlie Hunnam. Fantastic actor. Yes, great. Sons of yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch the Golden Globes. I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> do you do you watch the Golden Globes? You know, I didn't. Yeah. I was I was actually writing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You mean you were uh, you were doing something? I was working. Yeah, tinkering. <laughs> tinkering. Yeah. You writing another film? Another Hellboy film, perhaps, Guillermo. You see where I'm going with that? <laughs> no more movies until I do it. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd like another Hellboy. I think that three is right, you know. Yeah, three is perfect. Yes. The problem, the problem we have with, uh, with it, Ron wants to do it, Mike Mignola, Larry Gordon, everybody, except none of us has $150 million. <laughs> Kickstarter. CBS, CBS Films, CBS, what was CBS Films, Hellboy 3, 150 million bucks. Come on, we'll, we won't give out coconuts for a week. <laughs> we look Kickstarter. Though. Yeah, no, that'd be, that'd be cool. I'd like to, if you do Hellboy 3, can I be in it? Just, yes. uh, just very briefly, so as not to waste. I promise you, you will be destroyed. <laughs> it's a deal. Yeah. Someone tweeted me on the Twitter that, that a clip of this show that they saw in France. It's a French talk show. And then so I, I looked at it and I'm like... <laughs> Don't steal from this show! That's like taking pants from a hobo! <laughs> Bonsoir tout le monde, bienvenue, comment ça va Hey, oh What No, wait What are you doing I'm doing the show. No, you, you're doing my show, you're copying me No, ridiculous. Oh, I've got a present for you. Oh, really yeah. Is it Marie No. Oh, oh, oh this is... Wow so Thank you so much. You charming bastard. You just charmed.